In recent times, it's glaring how fraudsters use any number of techniques to collect money from unsuspecting investors. But this trend didn't start today, and it somehow seemed to have lasted throughout the years, despite heavy punishment offenders are made to undergo. Worse, it has evolved, adapting each time to the new era and the appeal of the masses. This video derives relevance from the recent outpour of Ponzi in the crypto market. I already have review videos on about 6 of them on this channel. Links to the playlist will be in the description box below. However, there are at least 20 of them currently running in the crypto space, all decentralized and Ethereum based. How did Ponzi move from what it used to be to what it is today? The answers are coming up right now. Welcome back future millionaires to yet another episode on this channel. If you are new here, do join the family. This channel is all about wealth, business and making money online. So if all that sounds good to you, go ahead, smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be informed when we put out new videos. So without any further wasting of your precious time, let's get into the video. First, let's try to understand the meaning of Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is a scheme which works by paying any investors with the money from recent investors. The hallmark feature of a Ponzi scheme is the manner in which investor returns are funded. Rather than legitimate growth or income, profits paid out to investors come from money subsequent participants invest into the scheme. Of course, those coming on board believe everything to be on the up and up, and early investors do receive investment proceeds so they have no reason to doubt its legitimacy. In fact, many people simply leave their money vested, continuing to watch their account values grow. This actually feeds the scam, as organizers aren't pressured to come up with cash gains. Instead, they just print statements showing investors how well their holdings are doing. But this is the earliest version of Ponzi scheme, and it looks a lot different today. Interestingly, the name Ponzi scheme comes from one of the most famous Italian-American swindlers in history called Charles Ponzi. Charles Ponzi's original scheme started in 1919 and was focused on the US Postal Service. The postal service at the time had developed international reply coupons that allowed a sender to pre-purchase postage and include it in their correspondence. The receiver would take the coupon to a local post office and exchange it for the priority airmail postage stamps needed to send a reply. Actually, Ponzi wasn't the inventor of this type of scams. It was called Robin Peter to pay poor schemes at the time. But Ponzi perfected the scheme, thus making his name synonymous with it. Charles Ponzi promised investors that he can give them a 50% profit on their money in 45 days or double their money in 90 days. This type of exchange is known as an arbitrage, which wasn't an illegal practice at the time. Due to his success in the postage stamp scheme, investors were immediately attracted. Instead of actually investing the money, Ponzi just redistributed it and told investors they made a profit. By May 1920, he had made $420,000, which is equivalent to about $5.4 million today. By June 1920, People had invested $2.5 million, which is equivalent to $32 million today. By July, he was raking in millions of dollars per week and rising. The scheme lasted until August 1920, when the Boston Post began investigating the Securities Exchange Committee initiated by Charles Ponzi. As a result of the newspaper's investigation, Ponzi was arrested by the federal authorities on August 12, 1920 and charged with several counts of mail fraud. This became the most popular Ponzi plot ever. Most Ponzi schemes in the 1920s centered on business firms or companies such as mortgage companies, stock markets, bill collection agencies, church ministries, etc. 1930s The major Ponzi plot in the 1930s was that orchestrated by Eva Kreger a Swedish businessman known as the Match King, who built a Ponzi scheme defrauding investors in his match industry. The scheme collapsed in the 1930s and he committed suicide by shooting himself. A lot of other similar original Ponzi-style Ponzi schemes are dotted all through the 1900s. 
each consisting of an individual who claims to be an expert at something, who eventually lures in investors and have them invest in what doesn't actually exist. He pays the early birds with the investments of the later investors. This continues in a predictable cycle until the system is no longer sustainable or the perpetrator is brought to justice. Fast forward to the 1980s. This decade witnessed unprecedented rise in the Ponzi plot, seeding roads into stock investment companies and mortgage companies. One of the most outstanding Ponzi schemes of this time was that of Jean Pierre Van Rossen, who ran a stock market investment company known as Monitron in Belgium. Van Rossen claimed that he had developed a statistical model to predict the behavior of the stock market and beat the capitalist system. Investors believed Van Rossen's claims and that trust coupled with his gift for self-promotion, allowed Van Rossen to accumulate $860 million. He was eventually sentenced to five years imprisonment. 1990s This decade saw an appreciable change in methods by Ponzi schemers, with the emergence of pyramid schemes and multi-level marketing approaches. Ponzi schemes were also recorded in churches, like that of church-named Greta Ministries International in Tampa, Florida headed by Gerald Payne in 1993. One of the most popular Ponzi plots of this decade, however, is that of MMM, a Russian company that perpetrated one of the world's largest Ponzi schemes of all time. By different estimates from 5 to 40 million people, lost up to $10 billion. The company started attracting money from private investors, promising annual returns of up to 1,000%. Most Ponzi schemes of the 20th century were centralized and only inside men knew what was truly going on. However, they didn't need to remain centralized. Too so many Ponzi schemes had already happened in the past and the telltale signs became known to almost anyone. It was time for a change. Now to the apex evolutional period of Ponzi schemes. Everything about Ponzi schemes climaxed in this era and splits majorly into two branches. The first branch looks like the original Ponzi scheme, only that this time it's online. It's a website with an anonymous ownership, no contact phone number or physical office address. The only thing you may find is an email. They somehow do their marketing well, so they get and pay their first wave of investors. This leads to an unprecedented inflow of investors. When they are satisfied with how much money they have accumulated, they close and abandon the site. After using normal payment methods for a while, some of which are reversible, these sites recommend you invest in using Bitcoin because Bitcoin transactions are untraceable and irreversible. It is the anonymity that comes with every Bitcoin transaction that makes it so attractive to fraudulent activities. Just recently, the Twitter accounts of some big time celebrities were hacked and a fake giveaway was hosted. Guess the currency that was used. Bitcoin. I've covered the story in another video, and its link will be in the description box below. Back to the video. This first branch evolved even further. They requested payments solely via Bitcoin or other similar cryptocurrencies, and they shortened the time it took for the same investment to mature. The shortest I've ever seen. One hour. 100% return in one hour. Sure, anyone looking at the site knows it is a scam, but it's really tempting. Most often than not, people just go ahead and give it a go. It's so tempting that the shorter the promised time for the capital to double, the more attention from people the scheme got. So there was an explosion of such fraudulent activities in the crypto space. Cryptocurrency Ponzi scam has raked in $4.3 billion worth of digital money in 2019, more than triple 2018's how. That's according to the latest in a series of recent data drops by blockchain analytics firm Chainalysis, all of which it has included in a lengthy report it published recently entitled 2020 State of Crypto Crime. Now to the second branch. This branch saw no need to keep their motives hidden. They evolved into pyramid schemes. Pyramid schemes are nothing more than Ponzi schemes running a democracy. On the fundamental level, they are the same. In pyramid schemes, the investments of people you bring in goes directly to you as profit. That is Ponzi scheme by definition. In pyramid schemes, you are getting other investors yourself. Whereas in traditional Ponzi schemes, 
The company doesn't require its investors to get other investors. Referral bonuses are an incentive to bring in more investors. However, bringing in more investors is not mandatory. Whether or not pyramid schemes hide the fact that there are neither products nor services available, it is entirely the decision of the perpetrator. What makes the recent Ponzi scheme in the crypto space unique is that they seem to be a hybrid of both branches with an extra touch, decentralization. This gives the idea of how much money you make depends on you. However, this isn't necessarily the case. Ponzi schemes thrive on naive people, people who don't really understand what is going on. With the recent hype about the potentials of cryptocurrency, a lot of people are diving into cryptocurrency without any knowledge about it. Hence, introducing them to a crypto-based Ponzi will likely be successful because they know little about cryptocurrency. It is the destiny of every Ponzi scheme to crash someday because its fall is the investment of new investors. Even if everyone in the world were to join a certain Ponzi scheme, we would still need more people to keep the Ponzi going. The biggest Ponzi scheme in world history was carried out in this century by Bernie Murdoch in December 10, 2008, who through defrauding his clients had created one of the most prominent financial firms on Wall Street. He was arrested and charged with a single count of securities fraud. As of December 2008, the losses were estimated to be $65 billion, easily making it the largest fraud in history. Murdoch was sentenced to 150 years in prison on June 29, 2009. I wonder what Ponzi schemes will evolve to become in the next century. It will be fascinating to see. Whatever it may be by then, I am certain that its foundation will remain the same, paying old investors with investments of new investors. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. Do hit the like on this video. It helps the channel grow. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. And comment down below your thoughts on this video. I promise to reply to all the comments. Do take care and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.